have a touch the pad. Used. Now then, crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, uh, I did start about five days ago to do a video on stripping down this Makita. 240 volt angle grinder, and there's the spec there, look for you. And then we got rudely interrupted by a phone call from Charlotte, my eldest daughter, who was down in Queenstown and needed rescuing. And there's going to be lots and lots of videos coming up on the channel about that road trip. But still, the grinder is in one piece, so we need to get it stripped down. Let's take a look to see why it failed. Here we go. Right. Well, I think first job will be to take the disc out. Like I said, this thing failed about, uh, it stopped working about eight, uh, eight months ago, I think it was. Six to eight months ago at least. So we'll just get rid of that. Oh, there we go. Right, now we can get this guard taken off. Yes, it's got a guard, unlike my other one. Oh, my finger is, uh, is fixing quite nicely. Look, look at that. So don't grind without a grinding um, guard. Otherwise, you'll dig into your finger like I did, and it still works. But it's got a bit of a bit of a bit of a lump on it now compared to my other my other finger. God knows what's going on inside there. I'm not really a doctor, so it still works. It's all that matters, right? So I'm slacking that off, and it should just come out somehow. There we are. Look, get rid of that. Wonderful. Okay, now not worried about the drive. It wasn't a drive problem, it was a, a Bernie smell problem. So I imagine the problem's in the motor itself. What we'll do is we'll just whip this, uh, this end piece off. Get that out of the way. And we can maybe try and diagnose what the problem was and see if it's fixable. Because that, uh, that rechargeable grinder that I fixed is still going really, really well. Very, very pleased with that fix. Now these grinders are not quite as quite as expensive as the rechargeable ones, so it may not be cost effective, but we need to find out what the fault is first before we can, you know, make a, a valid decision really as to whether we're gonna put some money into this one or just go and buy a new one. But rather disappointed that a Makita grinder failed on us. Okay, so oh, there we go. Right, so that's the the bevel drive. Bearing feels pretty good, don't need to worry about that. So it hasn't done that much work. Now, is that going to come off there? Yes, it is. Okay, that's loose. Right, now I did spot a screw down this end, which probably just gives us access to the brushes and stuff, so we'll have a little look in there. Now, I'm not a, an expert in repairing electrical tools, but, you know, I do have a, a basic skill in this area and a reasonably high level of success too, so hopefully... Maybe, just maybe, we can find out what the problem is. Oh, it's pretty sealed up, so we're going to need to split the casing, aren't we? Okay, I wonder if that's going to come out of there with the armature. Nope, okay, maybe we've got to get the brushes out first. So, we've got, just down here, look, we can see one of the little brush springs, and another one down here, and there's, by the looks of it, some little retaining screws that hold those brush packs in place. So we'll undo those. Maybe get those brush packs released from the commutator. Little tiny screws now. Jeez. Now I have found that Makita are very good at supplying spare parts pretty quick. Hmm, I need some pliers. I think I will. Alright, we'll just undo that wire first whilst it's still in place. Yeah, a pair of pliers required, bear with us. Right, okay, going in. Oh, that's one. We'll pull that one off while we're on. There we go, look. Come on, you can do it. Perfect, that's that one. Now, will that lift out? It should do, really, shouldn't it? Oh, look at that. 
Well, that was easy. Fantastic. That's one. Now for this side. We'll take a quick look at the brushes first. See how worn they are. I don't think they're going to be that worn. Ah, come back. There we go. Because it hasn't done that much work. Nothing like what the rechargeable one's done. There we go. Right. Brushes. Hmm. Well, still, they're not seized in the holders. They're working fine. And there seems to be plenty of meat left on them as well. And, of course, the little braid hasn't burnt out. So, maybe those don't need to be replaced. Are they handed? I don't know. Let's have a little look. Oh, look. They look identical, don't they? Brilliant. It means I can't get them wrong putting them back in. Okay. So now, now that the brushes are out of the way, can we remove the armature? Oh, yeah, look at that. <gasps> oh, no. Okay, close-up required. Instantly, I spotted the problem. It's not hard to find, actually. Where's my little pointy stick screwdriver? So this is the armature. And if you look inside here, we've got some pretty serious damage. We've got polling going on where it's been touching the... Oh, Siri, what's going on there? Siri, I don't Here's need what's it. trending on Twitter. Take a look. <laughs> Seriously? That's never happened while I've been filming before. Jeez, she listens to all sorts of stuff, doesn't she? Right, back to the job in hand. So, this is the armature. And you can see the commutator around here. Look where the brush is running. That looks in really good condition. Yeah, a bit, a bit blackened, but that's just normal. But, if you look down here, we've got the insulation. This white stuff has come out. And this one here is also bowed. It looks like it's been getting too hot. And by the looks of it, we've got a winding has been thrown out. And there's some of the copper. Just, just there, you can just make out the copper. So, the armature is junk. The windings have burnt out. I can't fix that. I would need to get a new armature. So, I'll have to find out if we can get one of these. And if we can, how much it's going to be. We can remove the pinion gear at the end there. Look, there's a little nut on that. So the pinion can come off, this end plate can come off, the fan can come off. We can probably pull the bearing off. It's got an anti-vibration uh, sheath around that bearing too. But it needs a new armature. Okay, well, I know what the serial number is. That's just there, look. So we'll go on to the old intraweb and see if we can find one to, uh, to get purchased. And well, how much it's going to cost us, basically. No point in going any further just yet. Everything else seems to be looking pretty good. Yeah. There you go. Look, quick scan around the other internals. You've got the switch gear there. Well, I don't know. It may not be fixable. Or viable to be fixable. Wow. Well, I'm really pleased I pulled it apart. Wow, wasn't expecting that. Uh, yeah, it could be a bit of a problem, couldn't it? Anyway, I'll do my research and I will, if I'm going to fix it, well, I'll report back. I'll do a video regardless of whether they're going to fix it or not, just to keep you updated. But I would suggest, you know, whenever you have a, a tool that's failed, a power tool that's failed, there's no harm in taking it apart to have a look, little look inside. And as we found with the rechargeable Makita, it, sometimes it's a simple fix. And in that case, it was just a case of replacing some of the brushes uh, or the pair of brushes that were in there. They're just, they're just worn out. And the tool, that particular tool, is working as good as new again. And it's done a lot of work since the last repair. Now then, crew, I'm back. I am. Now, you can probably tell that quite a few weeks have passed. I'm sure I've shaved since the last video, and it's all grown back again. So it has been a while. My apologies. I've been extremely busy with work. And I didn't get chance to edit up the last video, the bits, the footage you've just been watching, before the parts turned up. They arrived in about three days. So we have some new brushes. Look at that. So there's the part number for them. And just to clarify, this is the model of Makita that we're fixing there. Look, you can see on there all the model details. And it's a 9555, so 9555NB. And it's a 240 volt angle grinder from Makita. So, if you need to order any brushes, then there you go. There's the part number again on the back. 
some more information. And we managed to get a new armature. So this is the, the box that the armature... Oh no, torch has gone flat. Damn, we can't be having that, can we? Let's get a new battery. God damn you, Torchy. Ha ha, there we go. Right, how's that? Now, you may also notice I'm a bit grubby. I've been shutting under ceiling uh, another RRV today. Uh, it's been a, a terrible job. It's not, you know, it's not very nice, to be honest. You get covered in crap. But anyway, we got the new armature. That's the, the part number there. Look for the armature if you need one of those. And this cost me, I think it was just over 50 New Zealand dollars. Actually, I got a bit of a discount. It's been about 45 New Zealand dollars. So, inside the box, let's move the camera, take a look, and we'll open it together. Here we go. Right, said Fred. So there you go. And just one more close-up on the part number for you, for the armature. Let's see how much of an... Oh, look at that. Right. Reasonably well packed, which is good. Hopefully it's not damaged. We'll get rid of the box. And... Well, it comes with the bearing, that's good. The commutator is obviously in mint condition. Uh, it looks like a brand new part. And you can see here, look, where that, um, that's probably anti-vibration anti sort of compound in there. It's not an insulator, it just holds the windings in place, almost like a glue. And you'll see these little grooves here, look, that are being cut out, and that's to do with balancing the armature once it's been made to cut down on vibration. Now, the pinion's missing, so we're going to need to, here's the old one, here's the, uh, we've got to remove the nut, take off the pinion, and swap that across, but it does come with the fan as well, which is great, slightly different design, a little bit thinner blades, but that doesn't matter, and then, oh, there we are, look, we've also got this to swap across, we can do that now, that's, uh, again, for vibration purposes, so we'll pop that onto that bearing there, there we are, well, that was jolly quick. Right, so first job is to remove that pinion. So we'll slap this in the vise. Doesn't matter if we clamp it on there because this one is scrap. So we'll chuck it in the vise, pull that off. Hopefully the pinion will come off quite easily. Oh, it's got a chunk out of the teeth. <gasps> it's got another chunk there missing. Oh man, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll work. God damn, Ben, what have you been doing with this thing? Jeez. Look at that. Can you see the bits that should be there that aren't there anymore? Mm. Oh well, I'm sure we can get a new pinion if we need to. But it'll work for now, and that bearing's in good nick. No problems there. Right, in the vise, let's get the pinion taken off. And my apologies, people, I haven't made a video for quite some time. It's been way, way too busy. These last few weeks will work. Right. Now, is it left hand thread or right hand thread? I really don't know. Let's have a little look. Here's the new one. Right hand thread. Normal thread. There we go. Okay, well that's pretty easy. There's the nut. Oh man, look at that. It's not even keyed to the shaft. Wow. Okay. Now, is that going to come off easy enough? I don't know, I might need a little tappy tap. Come on, you can do it. Don't break the casting. Okay, maybe we can get a screwdriver behind it and just lever off the fan a little bit. I don't know, we'll find out. Dum -dum 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 -dum. He who dares, Rodney. Jeez. Okay, new plan. Oh, come on, Vice. Jeez. Until I haven't made videos for a while, even the Vice is seized up. Okay. There we go. Oh, even more there, look, it's all burnt. Didn't spot that one. Okay. Let's just see if we can shock that through. Now, of course, this is scrap, so it doesn't matter what happens to the shaft. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Right. That was easy enough, wasn't it? 
and it goes that's the outside where the drive is and this is the armature side so we'll get the new armature we'll pop him down there now that should press on that bearing oh, just popped out that should press on as we do up the no but we'll just give him a little tap is he going to go on I think we need a little socket don't we just to give it a bit more and probably a bit of cardboard around the armature into the vise and then we can use a, a socket around the outer race of the bearing just to tap it on just like we would do on a motorcycle part easy let's get set up okay we've got a bit of the box we'll just get the new armature we'll just wrap that around there really don't want to damage it and we'll stick that in the vise if you've got some soft jaws for your vise then even better I don't actually, it's one thing I've never bought, I used to use bits of aluminium but that was about it. So I'm just going to pop that in there, gingerly as Eric would say. Somebody's going to shoot me down from flames for doing this. There we go. Now we've got 10 tools size 19 socket deep, which should do the trick. And it came off pretty easy so it shouldn't need a lot to get back on. Think we're about there, that'll do for now. And then Mr. Pinion and the nut should finish that off into place. Now there was no thread lock on that or anything, so it wasn't over tight either. Okay. There we go, let's give it a little little tweak. See if I can hold it. Ah, there we go. Perfect. That'll do me. Great job. Very surprising that this isn't actually keyed to the shaft either. Okay, so the next job is, well, we can start to rebuild the grinder, can't we? Cool. Back to the uh, that side of the bench. Right, said Fred, so we don't need the old armature anymore. We'll just put that to one side. We've got everything off that that we need. And the new armature is now ready to go in. So, Mr. Grinder, I just want to have a little look, a real close up to make sure there's no debris down on the uh, on the outer magnets here look. Now these are windings as well so we want to make sure that there's nothing burnt or damaged in there. It does look like there's been something going on around here. Oh no, I can see a wire Oh, damn. Sorry, I was completely out of shot there. I was getting too carried away. And you can just see right down there, look. I can see a little wire poking out. So I think we're going to need to go a bit deeper in here and just pull the whole thing apart. And it may well be that Andy didn't do a very good inspection last time. It just, you know, you miss stuff, don't you? Just because you find a fault doesn't mean to say it's all the faults, does it? Right, I wasn't planning on pulling this apart anymore today. I was hoping to get it back together. Jeez, okay. Ooh. Sorry, camera. Jeez, that's even bent. What the hell? It's never been apart before. Okay, what's that going to allow us to do? Well think there we go we can get this bit out now this end piece hopefully it's not easy doing anything to the camera you know because you're always in the way people there we go right we'll have that out of the way Oop, there goes the old amateur right I really want that out I want to have a look at it now of course there's gonna be some wires so there's one. So where the hell does that go? Oh, it's all getting complicated now, isn't it? Oh, it's hardwired. So maybe that must be a plug on the end. It is, I think. 
Wow. Okay, well, we'll just leave that in there a little bit. And there should be another one. Where's the other one? There's got to be two. Oh, there's more than that. There's a load down here, look, as well. I might have to start labelling things up. I'm only going to forget. Oh, it does not look happy at all. And this is all one piece of plastic. I don't think that's going to come off there. No, it's one piece. But we do have the switch. So maybe that's what uh, some of those wires... Ah, there we go, look. Okay, so we've got... That was one of the wires off a brush, if I remember rightly. And then we've got this other one here that's going into there. And we've also got that one, which probably is the switch that I've pulled out. What an idiot. Okay, well, somebody who's pulled one of these apart now is going to be laughing at me and going, Andy, just do this. Let me get some pliers. Ah, here we go. Can I get hold of that? Not really. I want you to see the damage so we can verify it. How are we going to get those out of there without destroying them any further? Not that I can fix them, I know that. But, you know, it's good to know how to take things apart without destroying them, isn't it? So I'm pretty sure that that... No, they are windings. So we're going to have to unplug some stuff. So we've got those two wires there that go to the windings as well. Let me get a marker pen. It's all getting a bit messy, isn't it? Let's get rid of all that. Not the end of that. There we go. Right. Okay. So it may not matter, but I want to check. I want to put that on there. Just mark that and mark that. Now that can come off. Cool. Now, do I have a yellow? I do somewhere. Right, so we'll just label that one up with some yellow. We can take that one off now. There we go. Right, so I think, pretty sure, that's all the wires that we need to take off. Off. I'm just trying to look inside, have a little scoop round and see what else is maybe holding that thing in. So this end plate really just pushed against the aluminium. So that's probably loose now. So it should come out, but there's not a lot to grab hold of. That's the problem. Here we go. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Right. So we should be able to feed those wires through. Sorry, camera. Ah, perfect. Right, we'll get rid of that bit. And we can do a bit more of an inspection now on these outer windings. So what's going on? Well... I thought some insulation had come off them, but it hasn't. Okay, pointy stick. Now, I did see a bit of wire sticking out. There, look. There he is. But it's just completely bare, so it might not actually... There he is. It may not be a problem. So, we've got burning around here, look. That doesn't necessarily mean to say it's junk. But I think it is. Looks like it's got pretty damned hot. And again, round right there, look. So, unfortunately, we're going to need a new one of these. Damn. That won't be cheap, will it? Well, we could do a continuity test, I suppose. So it looks to me like there's two... There's two lots of wires... Because this is just an electromagnet. That's what it is. 
so we should get continuity. But saying that, looking at the damage, and that, that bit of wire there was just a rug bit of wire. It had nothing to do with with this, I would say, because it was no insulation in it at all. It was still shiny. It wasn't burnt. Mm. It's got very hot, hasn't it? This end seems fine. Can you spot anything? Do we risk it? That is the question. See all down there, if you can see, it looks quite badly damaged. Even the plastic's burnt there, look, with the heat. So it's probably melted a lot of the insulation off each of these windings, and now they're bridging across. And all that'll do is it'll increase the current flow because the resistance drops. Heat will build up, obviously, because there's more current flowing, and the magnetic field will become smaller because there's less windings in the circuit. Okay, well, I think I'm going to price one of these up. Hmm, it's not good, is it, at all? But we could chuck it back together and see if it works. That, let's do that, because I'm pretty bored this afternoon. I, I want to see how we get on with this thing. Oh, I really don't like the, the look of that at all, though. Hmm. All right. So there's two sets of windings, so maybe, maybe they're in pairs. I don't keep moving these too much because it's it's only a single oh, look at that there look. I broke my little my little screwdriver. Oh no, that's just additional sheathing. Hmm. <sighs> what to do? Well, one wire goes onto this side and one wire comes out. And that, I think, is that wire there. Yes. There, that's more like it. So that is a pair with that one. And those two are a pair for this side. So now we can test continuity. Look at that, I even worked it out. Genius. God, too many ciders. Right, let me go and find my uh, beepy beep thing. Right, so we'll use a battery, and I think first of all we'll use a little test light. So first of all we'll just chuck that onto there, we've got to make a circuit haven't we? So we'll chuck that, that lead onto there, and onto there. Hmm, yeah, we can work out what's going on. And then we'll put the test light clamp onto battery positive. Now we're going to test the test light, make sure it's working. It is. So if we've got continuity around this winding, the test light should light up. It does. Now, that is no evidence that some of the insulation around that coil of wire hasn't been damaged and some of the coils have been bypassed. Basically, it's bridging across, um, you know, at certain points around the winding, probably at this end here. But it is good news that it's still got continuity. We're sort of halfway there. Okay, let's test this other side. Just move them across a little bit because I'm running out of space. So we'll go on to that one. And we'll get Mr. Test Light again. Try and line him up for the camera. Oh, mint. That is great news. Okay. What we can do now is we could check the resistance of this winding against this winding here. Now, I don't know what the resistance should be. I don't have any specs. But if they're both the same, then you know, we should be good to go, because it's highly unlikely that the, the same number of windings have burnt out, uh, you know, or they have uh, bridged on both windings. So we'll get rid of Mr. Battery, we don't need that anymore. And Mr. Test Light. And we'll bring in Mr. Multimeter, and we'll put him on ohms. 
There we go. I have no idea what the homage should be, but we'll soon get him in the picture for you. There you go. And we'll just check internal resistance. So I'll get the old leads. And internal resistance is ugh, bugger all. 0.6. Okay. So what have we got on this one? Now I don't want to get it going through my body at the same time. Here we are, look. God damn, right. Sorry, my fault. What have we got there? 2.9 ohms, 2.8, 2.7. Always go for the lowest. Okay, 2.7 on that winding. And on this winding we've got... Oh, she's all over the place. Oh, there we go. It's settling down. Alright, so we've got 3.1. So we've got higher resistance. Got a broken wire? No. Okay, we settled down to 3.2. Let's just check that one again. Hey, they're pretty close. About 2.9 for this pair of windings and about 3.2 for this pair so got nothing to lose have we okay let's rebuild it now I'm really interested to see what this wire is here it doesn't seem to go anywhere we'll poke it back through there again that's where it came from and I think let's have a little look inside you can tell I don't know what I'm doing do you? it just sits in there so it must I reckon just make contact with the outside of this and it may just sense temperature it might be like some kind of a thermal cutout just to you know make sure you don't completely destroy the tool in this case it didn't work so we'll pull that out for now let's get this outer winding back in the field windings now the switch was here so those three need to go through we still got the paint on them yes we have cool we got for that so they need to go through that hole it's going to be very hard to get this on camera people so we'll worry about those three for now there we are look at that what a genius we'll flick it over and then we'll see we need to get that other black wire through don't we and it looks like it's got to come through maybe through here I would say it came through because then it goes around here to the brush so where is he there he is I can see him down there go on you can do it there could be a lot of swearing going on he's not far away <laughs> Honestly, how do they do this in the factory? They have people with lots of patience, is that right? Oh, there we are. Oh, we've got him. Oh, yeah. Right, so we'll just slide that winding back in. All the way. There we go. Okay. Now we can get this end plate put back in the end, can't we? You're very, very close at the moment, aren't you, on the camera, but we'll see how we get on. Now, one of these was bent. Hmm. That one. Now, this doesn't seem to be handed, so it can go in either way, I think. And they just run 
right down those grooves down there by the looks of it. Oh, look at all that field wire. Just want to push it down a bit out of the way. There it is. Okay. Dum 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 dum. Oh, it's all gonna let more smoke out, I reckon, when we fire it up, but we'll see. We've done some tests, haven't we, which is good. It's not like me to do tests. Not fixing one of these things, anyway. Oh, no, we're completely off, off target with that one. There we go. And it is bent, and it must be bent from the factory, Mr. Makita. Right, AVE, the chap that has a YouTube channel, like AVE, he is fantastic at taking shit apart and putting that together again. I would never dream of trying to be as good as he is. Okay, so we can put some wires back on. That goes up to the brush, I believe. And we've got, there we are, Mr. Yellow. He can go back on there. And we've got Mr. White go back on there. Holy moly. Pretty organized, eh? There we are. I'll just wrap those up neat. A little pigtail on them. Here we are. Right, I'm gonna get my stool. Does my backing. Oh, crouching over. Okay, now it's, it was probably <laughs> couple of months ago when I pulled this thing apart so you've got to bear with me a little bit on these brushes now where's the new ones here we are look so again there's your part number fingers crossed these are the right size now, I did ask the guy do they come in the holders or do you buy the separate brushes and he went oh you know what these uh, he thought they came in the holders but clearly not I'm gonna need a smaller screwdriver hang on I just got, just got comfy as well now we're going to be trying to act professional now because we've got a screwdriver that's meant for mains use. Look at that. What brand is that? There we are. W-I-H-A. Insulated screwdriver. I'm only using this because I broke my Tang one again. Oh, I'm so rough with it. Okay. I even had shuts on it. What the hell? So, plan A is we may as well put the new brushes in, but how, let's just see how worn the old ones are. Oh, I'll well, take them out and have a look. That's probably the best idea. So we're just going to unplug that from there, if it will. We could do with a smaller pair of pliers, really. I think it should come off. He says. Could be a long video. There we go. Right. So Mr. Brush just feeds out the bottom. Okay, right, how much are these brushes worn? Do they need to be replaced? Probably not. There you go, look, it's about, oh, maybe three millimeters have come off the end of that brush. Okay, well, we'll stick the new one in anyway, seems we're here. So we get our little brush pack again. Thread that up. And then we can pop that back on there, look. How easy was that? Very, very, very easy. Too easy, actually, really. Now, that needs to go further on than that. There we go. Okay, that's one done. We'll keep those for spares, because they might fit something else. Now, yeah, where's the other one? There he is. Okay, well, same again, Sam. Should have had tall girl Sam give me a hand today, shouldn't I? Not seen Sam for ages. I hope she's all right. I'll have to send her a text. No, you can't have a number before you ask. Jesus. Okay, keep going. Persevere. They're quite, they're quite strong, these little holders, but you can bend them if you're not careful, so. Oh, there we go. Right, we'll get that one out. This is quite different to fixing a motorcycle, isn't it? 
when you're saying that you do we do have to change brushes and starter motors and things so I suppose the skills very similar Which hence probably why I'm giving it a go okay put that on there give it a wiggle see if we can get it all the way on oh there we go yep that's as far on as it's gonna go okay now these have to go in after the armature so at least we've fitted the new ones we'll pop those old brushes in there because I hate to throw things away where's he gone there he is stick it in there and then you know should this grinder actually outlive these new brushes we've got some that might just keep us going okay so new armature with a nice shiny commutator now, not too sure. There is a groove. I don't know where it goes. Oh, there it goes. I think it goes here. But then there's a groove there as well. And there's one there. So does it matter? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, let's pop that in there. Now, can it go one of four places? Now that's the, I reckon it goes down the bottom. Usually you have gaps like that, things like that at the bottom. It doesn't want to settle on there, does it? So it's either going to go at the top. There we go. Or the bottom. I don't think it matters where it goes. So that should spin on it. Maybe it'll give it a twizzle around. See if that improves the. That's just the fan catching. It is. It's not the armature. We're okay. All right. So we've got that at the top. We've put that down the bottom, out of the way. She's okay. So now. I think the next job is going to be to fit the actual uh, bevel drive, the end piece. Now the bearing in here is really good. It has got a bit of grease in it. Somebody said to me you shouldn't put grease in these, but this one has got grease in it, look. And I didn't put that in there. So, you know. So that goes on there. And now, oh, look at that, you can see the. Oh, that feels pretty good. I think we need to tuck that wire out of the way though. It seems a bit vulnerable. Let's just tuck that up there. Like that. There we go. Okay, and we can stick that back in, can't we now? Get rid of that. Whatever that is. Somebody will know. Now we need some more screws. Good job for a Saturday afternoon. I started pretty early on this morning to get that, uh, that ROV shut. It's quite a big job. Ben takes a lot of the panels off in Auckland, but it's still mobile, so I can get it on and off the trailer easy enough. Then there's about an hour's worth of parts still to take off, you know, exhaust and CVT drive, air ducting and other bits and pieces, and you've got to mask a few things up with the brakes and park brake and a lot of wiring connectors as well because if you get shuts on a wiring connector it's an absolute pig because you've got to get it all off again before you'll get before the connector will actually click together it's pretty thick gooey stuff eric oh hates the under seal i use don't you eric <laughs> that's all right the surf clubs that uh, that get these vehicles are very very happy because we put so much work into preparing them for them that uh, you know, no other manufacturer wants to do that, so it all works to everybody's advantage. Although I don't get many weekends off anymore. There we go. Right. Okay. So we now need to do brushy brushes. So I reckon this will be pretty easy. Oh, jeez, nearly. 
that goes in there like that there we go and then this must oh, it pushes onto there doesn't it that's right I remember now so screws for brushes there we are one two three and another one and the little posies so I'm gonna need a posy screwdriver god damn hang on a second So we're not far off giving this thing a go, so probably now's about the time to place your bets, people. Is it going to let more smoke out, or is it actually going to work? And do you think I should buy some new field windings? Because they were looking pretty rough, weren't they? So maybe I'll price some up, and we'll find out. Because, you know, it's not just about the cost of fixing it, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? And sometimes... Just sometimes it's quite nice to actually give a tool another lease of life rather than chuck it in the bin. Sort of a sense of satisfaction. There we go. Right, that I'm pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure, went on there. So that's that brush in. So we'll do it all over again on this side. Hopefully a little bit quicker now. Now I might just put that on first. So I can wiggle it on lazy. There we go. Right. There we go. Let's do that one first this time. So it's not long now before we have the tool girls back in the workshop. I was talking to tool girl Lily only the other week. And she's very, very keen to get back in. Well, partly because she's got some more stuff to do on her car. She needed an L2 sensor fitting, which she bought about three months ago. And it still hasn't been fitted. Ridiculous, isn't it? Okay, well, to me, we've run out of wires to plug in. Nothing's going to catch. They're all out of the way, which is good. One final check. Maybe it's going to work. you just got to place your bets now, people, because otherwise it's going to be too late. That switch works. That's good. Cool. Right, where's the cover? Here it is. Let's get Mr. Cover back down the wire. Yeah, and there was one more screw that goes in the back. I think I've done quite well to remember all this. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right there. I know it's the wrong screwdriver. But is it working? It is working, look at that. Although we are getting a bit of torque on there now. Maybe I'll have to use the right one. Let's use the bigger one. Because it has got a flat on as well, so there you go. Look at that. Right, we don't need the end piece on, you know, the shield and stuff, to test it, do we? We can test it now. So, let me plug it into the wall. <laughs> we go. In fact, let's swap cameras, because you need to be a bit further out. There we go. <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to plug it in to the mains. It's 240 volt in this country, New Zealand. Although the pins are a bit bent. They always get bent on these crappy plugs. Look at that. Honestly, give me an English plug any day of the week. Okay, this could be quite dodgy. Okay, it's turned on at the wall. Any smoke? 
know it's turned off, but you know, there's still power going to it now. No smoke. Okay. I'm gonna flick the switch. Are you ready? <laughs> oh yeah. Wow! Well, obviously the field windings hadn't quite burnt out, had they? Brilliant stuff. Right, let me turn it off again. There we go. We can get the shield put back on. Bloody good. So happy. Now, I think it goes on. Is that right? There, like that donkey. Right. <sighs> Oh yeah, another grinder back in action, which is good because I'm making some more beams now for the workshop, so we'll be able to test it. But I think I will order one of those new um, windings, the actual field windings for it, just in case, and then we know it's perfect. Well, hey, it works! I'm so chuffed, look at this. Oh no, <laughs> I turned it off at the wall. Hang on. Right, we've energised again. Here we go. Is it going to work twice in a row? Yes! The Makita 9555NB lives again. Good job. Very happy that I've done that. Now, so what did it cost? Well, I think this, this cost about 200 New Zealand dollars when I bought it for Ben as a Christmas present because we, we buy tools for each other at Christmas. And that would have been, that was a few years ago. And it's cost, it's done a lot of work, and it's cost probably for the armature and the new set of brushes, which it actually didn't need, but it's good practice to fit new brushes when you fit in a new, you know, a new commutator anyway. I think I probably paid about 60 bucks for the whole lot. Pretty cheap, really. Uh, and in this video, I've shown you how to take it apart which I had no idea because I hadn't taken it apart before. Um, we inspected the, the uh, armature and we found it was all burnt and the windings were damaged in there. So that's why you know, the main reason why it wasn't working. That, that was the actual primary fail, I think, really. Um, brushes were fine. And, of course, we found some visual damage overheating on the field windings. There were two windings. And we first of all tested continuity using a very simple test light. I did that because it's quite visual, you know, on the on the video. And it's a nice quick simple check. And then we tested resistance of those two windings. Now we didn't know what the spec was, but I thought, well, if they're both about the same, we should be good to go. And we did that on a standard, very dusty multimeter. So Ben will be very happy. Because his dad didn't break his grinder. Well, he did, but he's now fixed it for him. So, would I do it again? Yeah, of course I'd do it again. Because it's fun to fix stuff, and Ben's grinder now works again. I hate to throw things away. And it's cost me probably a third of the price of buying a new one. So, definitely worth doing. Okay, well, I deserve a little treat now. So, I was in, in Taupo yesterday, and I found these. Look at that. Lake Man. Hairy Hop Indian Pale Ale. Now there was a, a, an, assort, an assorted box, you know, you got different types. There were six different beers and lagers and stuff in the one box. So I'm going to try this one now. I am. My little Teng Tools. Special, look at this, what Brandon gave me. A little Teng Tools bottle opener. Cheers, Brandon. Right. Well, crew, success. We've fixed something else and we've made a video. That's pretty good, actually. Lake Man. That's what I like. Definitely buy that again. And it's made in Taupo. It says here, look, somewhere. That's why it's called Lake Man. Where does it say there, look? Taupo Brewed. Which is pretty cool. So not only that, I'm drinking local, local ale. Mm. Okay, better sign the video off. Hope you enjoyed it. 
Uh, I am fine. There's the only reason why I've not been doing videos is I've been really, really busy uh, with work for the last couple of months, and I've got a batch of ROVs to do the underselling for for the surf clubs. It takes up a lot of time on a weekend, but it's Saturday, and it's you know all stripped, painted with the underseal. It's now curing outside of the nice sunshine which we've got, which is pretty rare at the moment. Tomorrow it's going to go back together and I'll get maybe some more time to make another video. Who knows? I'm going to edit this one tonight. So it's going to go straight up on the channel. Fingers crossed it'll be on the channel before midnight today. That's the plan. Well, crew, if you enjoyed the video, why not, where's it going to be? Why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. It could be this side. I always forget. And then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And our friends at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. Now, there used to be three or four videos every single week. Then I changed jobs. And time is really hard. But I am going to really, really try to get caught back up. I've got quite a few videos in the can that I haven't had time to edit yet. Especially episodes two and three of the Rescue Charlotte series. I'm about halfway through editing the second one. So hopefully, within a week, that'll be on the channel too. Uh, oh, pardon me. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+. Plus. No, you won't. Google Plus is gone. Jeez. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. And there's also lots of other stuff going on on there as well. You can send me an email if you like. There's an email address uh, down in the description. Now, there is also a Patreon page. Now, the Patreon page was set up um, really to be able to give you more information and background about the channel, uh, how it came to be. There's also profiles on there for all the tool girls that have been through the show and helped me out on many, many videos. There's even a, a, a playlist of the tool girl videos, and there's over a hundred videos with assistants to give me a hand, which is great. I really enjoy having them in the, in the workshop and very much looking forward to them coming back soon. Promise. Uh, what else? So yes, if you uh, would like to become a patron, then you know you can do that through the Patreon page. And at the next mail call, I will no doubt give you a shout out. I am hoping at some point to be able to uh, do a certain tier where you can actually have your name put in the credits as a you know a supporter of the channel as well. Uh, I need to pull my finger out and do a lot more. I want to I want to do a new intro, uh, a new. Um, you know, what do you call it at the end? The credits thing, you know, where it plays that one. Um, yeah, it's about time, isn't it? But I need time. That's the problem. Okay, crew, I ramble on. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha